guys it's Laura here again welcome to another video and let's get into it today's video is on the legendary Mexican artist Frida Kahlo known not only for her self-portraits and impressive surrealist oeuvre but also her values what she stood for and her very iconic look her monobrow moustache traditional Mexican dress is extremely striking and this image of her is ingrained I think in the minds of many, especially in these recent years she has become increasingly popular. But why has she become so popular? What is it that makes her so special and relevant in this day and age? Frida Kahlo was born in Coyoacán, Mexico City, Mexico. She was born on July 6, 1907. Her father was a Hungarian immigrant and her mother Mexican. She had two older sisters and a younger sister. They all lived in La Casa Azul, the Blue House, which is now her museum. Carlo, since childhood, has always had poor health. She contracted polio at six years old, making her right leg to grow much thinner. And if things couldn't get much worse, at the age of 18, she suffered a tragic event that made sure that her life would never be the same again. She was on a bus which was crashed by a streetcar. In a result, she was impaled by the hip by a handrail and her pelvis and spine fractured. She was not only in physical pain, but also extremely scarred mentally. Frida was in recovery for months and bound to her bed for the majority of that time. Her father decided to gift her paint, which she used to paint all over her casts. He then made her an easel so that she could paint while laying down and her mother placed a mirror on the ceiling so that she could see herself while she painted. While on her bed with all her cast, she completed her first self-portrait. Due to all of her encompassing health issues, this explains why she always wore long dresses because it helped her hide the fact that she had one leg shorter than the other. She also had very special orthopedic shoes. After her recovery, she wanted feedback on how to improve her work. She asked Diego Rivera for advice. Diego Rivera was a very famous muralist in Mexico at the time, painting from his political ideals and about Mexican life. They married a year later. It was like a marriage between an elephant and a dove, many people said. There was also a 20 years age difference between Diego and Frida, but Frida didn't care, she was in love. As a couple, they lived in the US, which Frida did not enjoy as she felt like she was cut off from her Mexicanity, self-portrait on the borderline between Mexico and the United States, 1932. During this period, she also suffered several miscarriages and realised she would never become a mother, which completely crushed her and we know this just by looking at some of her self-portraits from this time that I think personally are some of her most difficult to see because they truly make you feel the anguish and pain she was feeling when this was happening to her. Furthermore, during their marriage, Diego had many affairs, one of them being a year-long relationship with her younger sister, Christina. She separated from Diego straight away, cut off her hair and began dressing in men's clothes. However, in 1944, they remarried. Frida also had many more surgeries concerning her spine and had to wear a corset in a result. She was struggling with her chronic pain, but nothing was working. In the year 1953, she attended her first solo show in Mexico City in her hospital bed. This did not stop her from drinking tequila and smoking. Months later, she had to get her right leg amputated to stop gangrene. She passed away one week after her 47th birthday in her blue house. Since her death, she became an icon and her popularity grown exponentially. She has so much fame now all around the world that she overcomes the fame of her husband, Diego, that once overshadowed her and her paintings. With her fame comes along her fans and the people that look up to her, Freedomania. This Freedomania has become a subculture within itself with people using her image on a daily basis to represent fierceness, perseverance and freedom. This subculture has her in the forefront and cherishes the groundbreaking path that she has created, learning that it is okay to feel all these different emotions and that you will surpass anything that comes your way, just like she did. 
Thank you so much for listening. I hope you liked learning about this amazing woman's life. If there's any other artist or designer's life you want to learn more about, please leave it down in the comments below. I would really appreciate it if you'd leave a like, please subscribe and put your notifications on so that you could be notified for when I next post. See you on the next one. Bye.